Welcome to another episode of Before You Buy, the show where we give you some hands-on impressions of a game, give you our thoughts, and try to help you make an educated decision about whether or not you like a game before you buy it. I'm Falcon, I'm the resident Sonic fool, so you can understand why we went with me. I'm not going to go through the obligatory Sonic cycle spiel that everybody does at the beginning of every Sonic review. I want to just get right into it, and I want to say this, I was ready to hate this game. I mean, really, really hate it. For a while, I had a wait and see attitude, but the more I saw of it, the more I was like, wow, no, I don't want it. And I'll just go ahead and say this too, the things that I expected to be wrong with it were exactly what was wrong with it. However, this is a good game. It's not a great game. You're not going to have revelations about the world or yourself after playing it. It certainly does not hold a candle to Sonic Mania, but as far as 3D Sonics go, this is probably the second best one. First best being Sonic Colors. Yeah, that's right, I put this above Sonic Generations because I'll just say this as well, I'm kind of tired of nostalgia. When I pop in a Sonic game, I want it to be new, or at least different and original like what Sonic Mania did. Like a lot of the art obviously was old, but the game itself, in my opinion, overhauled in a good way. In Sonic Mania 2, I probably would like to see more original levels, but Sonic Mania was the reset we all wanted. But that was 2D Sonic, this is 3D Sonic. So again, this is a good game, but that comes with about a mountain of caveats, because there's things that pretty much anybody who likes Sonic isn't going to love. And it's going to be different things for different people, they kind of grab bagged it with what they included in the game, and eh, mixed results. So let's just start with the main Sonic levels. Modern Sonic, that is. The mainline Sonic levels are not the best 3D level design in a Sonic game, period. But to me, I think the formula has been honed. Like, I feel like from this point forward, there probably won't be bad 3D Sonic levels. Because the 3D levels in this game range, in my opinion, from decent to very good. They're not as inventive as the levels in Sonic Colors, but they're more consistently good than even Sonic Colors itself. Now that being said, they don't reach the greatness of Sonic Colors, but they also don't reach the low points of Sonic Colors, if that makes sense. Does that necessarily make the game better? I think not, because sometimes the bad points are worth it for the high, amazing points. But to have a consistently enjoyable experience with all the 3D levels, at least the Sonic ones, I think is actually a pretty big jump for the Sonic franchise. Now, here's where the mixed stuff comes in, though. I love the character creator. I think that it is fun as hell. I think that it is wonderful the way they've put in the customization in which beating a level gives you rewards. You get new things that you can use on your OC. There are no microtransactions and there are no loot boxes. So huge bravo to Sonic Team for not caving into those crazes. But let's just say this, OC stages are a little bit on the border. They're not the best thing you're gonna play. Some of them are great, the original character's movement is a little airier than Sonic, especially in 2D segments where it feels like he's a bit out of control, at least the first few times you play as the OC. The level design's a lot like Sonic's level design, just not optimized for the main mechanics that this game is built around. And the original character is sort of interchangeable mechanics ensure that things never really focus, which for some people will probably be more of a problem than for other people. Once you get going, Sonic and your OC also sort of work together a la Sonic Heroes, although with only two and the mechanic works better than Sonic Heroes in my opinion, but I think the stages designed specifically for the character work a little better. It's kind of a matter of focus, again, I had a decent time with the OC levels. Which brings us to my major gripe of the game, Classic Sonic. Now Sonic Team said they observed Sonic Mania to make sure they could incorporate things that they knew people would like. But as far as I'm concerned, this game would have been significantly better had they not included Classic Sonic. The generation's Classic Sonic physics are back, which is an improvement over the Dimps Sonic games, which God help me for even mentioning. But going from Sonic Mania to this is just jarring. It feels bad. Just bad. Sometimes Sonic feels like he has too much momentum, sometimes it feels like he has no momentum. They included the drop dash from Sonic Mania, which I originally thought, oh, that's great, I'm so glad that Sonic Team recognizes that as a good thing. And then I realized I don't care in the least. 
because the drop dash is not nearly as fun to use on Sonic Team's classic Sonic. It's just nothing compared to Sonic Mania. The levels feel tedious, and while designed not terribly, are not even on par with what I would call pretty consistently good 3D Sonic design. And in my opinion, this stuff slows the game down and is the main problem of Sonic Forces. Understand that coming from me, somebody who has wanted something like Sonic Mania forever, saying that they shouldn't have included classic Sonic in this game should carry at least some weight. The music in the classic Sonic levels, great. In fact, overall, the music's pretty damn good in this game. Sometimes it reaches into overly serious, but can't take it seriously territory, but still. And while the music is near flawless, the graphics actually I would call flawless. The graphics in this game are phenomenal. This is easily the best looking Sonic game that has been, period. They finally nailed the kind of style that works in a semi-serious, but still a world where colorful animals try to stop. A fellow who takes his name from eggs type world. Visually, it all really works for me, and even Sonic Generations didn't do that. Sonic Colors and Sonic Lost World were games that did actually visually cohesively come together and really work well, but it was neat they were able to go for a theme they don't typically go for and have it work. Speaking of themes they don't typically go for, the plot of this game is that Eggman won and took over the world, and you're part of a resistance. This is in many ways the same kind of story that was told on the Saturday morning Sonic series in the 1990s, which is easily the darkest of the Sonic media out there, at least as far as I'm concerned. This is kind of trying to be a balance of dark and sometimes goofy, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. What sucks is the dialogue was clearly not written by the same people who gave Sonic Boom its only redeeming quality and that was its personality. The story of this game was not written by people who have the same level of writing experience or comedic talent as Sonic Boom and the series that spawned off of Sonic Boom. And that's unfortunate because I think that they probably could have done a lot more with this. The scenario is less important, I think, than the actual quality of dialogue and interaction, and it's not very high in this game. It's serviceable most of the time and laughable sometimes, but it's also a Sonic game, so eh, it's not really the most important thing for me. So in conclusion, I think that Sonic Forces could work as a template for future Sonic games if Sonic Team understands that what they need to do is take the stuff that works and focus just on that and make more games like it. Sonic Team, leave classic Sonic to Taxman and Stealth. They get it, you don't. You do a good job making fast-paced, spectacle-oriented levels based in a combination of reflexes, memorization, and one's ability to predict patterns. You finally consistently made a game full of that kind of level that is all good, and you should be applauded for that. Please only do that in future Sonic games. You're there. You finally get it. Don't do the other stuff. Focus on making another Sonic Colors level game. You can do it. You're capable of it. Please do. Now as for everybody, if you understand all of the things that are wrong with it, but still understand that it's a game worth playing if you like 3D Sonic, I'd say it's a buy. It's $39.99, not full priced, no microtransactions, it's just the game, you have the game, play the game. Like I said, it's probably the most consistently good 3D Sonic game there is. It's not the best, but it is good, and it stays good. It's about a 3-4 hour game, but I'd say it also has a lot of replayability because I think the courses are actually good. I know that this runs a little bit contrary to the reviews that have come out for this game in publications, but I think this is worth 40 bucks. It's not worth 60 bucks, but it's worth 40 bucks, and it costs 40 bucks. So honestly, I think it's worth your time. For anybody out there who's played it, feel free to share your comments, though. Obviously, the whole point of these videos is to bring as much perspective into the equation as possible before people make purchases, so we'll meet you down in the comments. If you like this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week, and the best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero, and we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.